Hi everyone, welcome back to another lesson. Um, we're going to today. I'm going to be doing a very simple demonstration that you can paint along with. There'll be a picture you can download or copy from your computers, whatever you want to do, um, for you to paint along to if you choose to. Um, this is going to be a, a, a simplifying the scene a lot because I'm just going to be using three colours on this. <coughs> Excuse me. That's the three colours that I did on the uh, demonstration, the uh, colour mixing demonstration, which is cadmium yellow. Um, Windsor blue and alizarin crimson and I'm going to use these three uh, colours on this painting and I'm going to see what I can get out of it and see how how vivid I can make it and lively and hot and warm and uh, a bit like the photograph so uh, yeah I'll just get the uh, colours uh, sorted out and we'll get stuck straight in so this is going to be a simple no fuss messing approach to painting a watercolour I'm just going to be blocking in the sky and the water to start with but I am going to um, use my Mr. Bottle and mist the paper a bit just to get a nice uh, nice run. So I'm just using the Windsor Blue in the sky. And what I'll do is I come down towards the horizon, I'll just pale it out slightly. bit of water on my brush and just let it fade out down towards the horizon and that is going to be my sky. I'll just go over the land mass a little bit because that's quite blue down here and this is how simple you can make watercolour painting you know and now we've got the water the, fl the blue sea through here a bit more blue on my brush just make sure you leave any areas white that you want to to preserve those you know you can use masking fluid if you want to not a problem um, so I'm just painting around my white areas I've kind of worked out what I want to leave and I'm painting around them now some railings there I don't wor worry too much about it but so basically the top half of the painting is just blue now while that's still damp what I might do that's just where the mast is going to be I want to leave some highlights on the mast and I'm going to put a little bit of alizarin crimson in there and I just want to have a nice warm colour back here because it's quite and I don't mind it running into the water it's quite soft at the edge there but what I don't want to do is go over my boat now to cool that down a little bit I'm going to add some blue just to green it out a little bit as it is and I'm just flicking that careful not to go over my boat saying that you probably will now I'm going to have a little bit of alizarin crimson on its own just to pink it up in places make it interesting now I'm going to pour some blue into this so this is just some neat winds of blue because there's water down here by the boat and I want to portray that there's some water there just underneath the boat but there's some nice warm colour just here some green so a little bit of uh, so those three colours are working really well to produce quite ni nice rich browns Moves. Make sure I go under my boat. I nearly forgot that bit. Okay, then now I'm going to start mixing the colours for this distant piece of land through here. And I'm looking, and I'm just going to mix probably to a couple of different values for that, maybe th up to three different values, um, just to get some interest in there. I 
it's a, a bright green to start with because if I want to do this quite quickly don't want to mess about and then while that's still wet I'll mix up a darker wash of the same colour just adding more blue just going to drop those colours in. So basically I'm just going to let those darker colours run into uh, some trees on the top. Just sketch those, leave them, leave them some sky holes in them so they look and just skip the brush around. So really I've just used I think that's enough for that. Now this lamb, there's a big lamb mass back here, lots of trees. Now I want to get lots of this and brat on the top, it's kind of sunlit at the top. So I want to make sure I get the warm colours in on the top. But as it comes down to the water's edge, it's very dark and uh, and heavy and, and, and cooler in colour. So I'm going to start off with some cadmium yellow, alizarin crimson. I want a warm browny colour because the trees are kind of just tinted brown at the top. So they're giving me that. So I've just got a little pool of colour coming on there. Now I've got to work quite quickly here because I want to keep all this um, running wet. I don't want it to dry and get hard edges. So I'm just sketching in trying to break up the top slightly. You can see that here, yeah, that's okay. So just use your brush on its side just to get those broken edges. Okay that's about it. Now I want to mix up some deeper colour. So for this I'm going to take some more Windsor yellow, a uh, Windsor blue, add some more cabin yellow to it and let that just run in on in places. There's a slight overhang of the trees there of the water. I want to get that in if I can. More Windsor blue, cadmium yellow. Now I'm going to bring some uh, alizarin into play to make some purpley colours, purpley greens. And that makes them really dark. I'm going to leave a little bit of light for my mast. just keep varying the colours really. We're just using three colours here so it's quite easy and we're just going to warm them up in places, cool them down in other places. It's just, you know, keeping it reasonably interesting. <coughs> So I'm going again, mixing more Windsor Blue, some more Alizarin. I want it some quite dark down in this corner here. And before it dries I can keep going back in and uh, anywhere I think I can create some interest I will. Push at the top. I'm 
just going to leave that like that. Just going to mix some Windsor Blue now. And I'm just going to make some. It's, it's not. I don't want to run it too much into the water. I just want. It. There's some little highlights. I just want to keep it very. So I'm just going to do it like that today. <coughs> just where the overhang is. It's almost like dry brush. It just comes. Just, just managing to create that, just by letting the brush break up on the tooth of the paper, and that's all I'm going to do. I don't want to fiddle. Very easy to cut, start fiddling. I'm just going to go back to this island, to the the background, and just complete that with a couple more darks. I said possibly three values. We did two. And that's probably going to do us just there, just there. This one. Make most of that overhang of the trees yeah. in places. Just you can just see some branches, and that just helps a little bit. Okay then, now we're just going to start building up this uh, the, the, the sand area here a little bit where it comes in where the water meets the sand. And for that, I'm looking at my, it's quite a sort of a warm greeny browny colour in my picture. So the closest I can get to that really is by mixing uh, cadmium yellow with some um, lizarin, the three colours, we want to stick with that. And then just use in places where it's slightly cooler just use the um, and greener just use the uh, Windsor blue to to uh, get the desired color but I think the secret of this bit now okay is we want to use the brush we want to get information down but we, we want to do it in as few strokes as possible and what we want to do is let the brush the tooth of the paper do the work and um, we, instead of painting heavily now, we want to paint quite lightly. We want the brush to skip over the page and give us a nice broken effects. We don't want a big heavy blobby area down there, he says. So I'm just going to have a little feel for it. See, I'm just trying. It's a little bit too much paint on my brush there. But I'm just going for a nice feel. Bit of green in it. Now I'm going to move some move to some more yellowy green colour. I don't want it all too warm. I'm just looking at my paints. And doing it this way, you've got time to think, you know, you've got time to sort of plan what you're doing. So make sure you preserve your whites on your boat because that's going to be quite a focal point in a minute. I'm going to put a, a bit of interest on there. So I'm, I'm using the dry brush and I'm, so I'm dragging the brush across the paper and I'm getting left with all those highlight, highlight areas um, on the page. Get some more blue bit of brown. I don't want to go in too wet on this now as so it will start blooming. I want to get, I'll make sure the paint's thick enough to apply to the paper. There we go. And over this side, there's some more stuff going on. It's a little bit darker. 
again, I want to make sure I don't go over the boat and then just soften the edge. And fade it out a little bit. And that's that done. Let's put some darks in here, just where they are. I don't want to be too heavy handed. Same over this side. I'm just letting the brush skip over the page just up to the waterline. And that's enough, really. And where these little stones are, I'm just kind of using the dry brush effect. bit more yellow to vary the colour slightly. But again you don't want to overdo this. You don't want to do too much. Now okay now we're going to look at the boat. First of all we're going to paint this shadow side on the boat. And there's a nice highlight on this side, so I want to keep that really white. Um, now I've only got the three colours here, and they're not the three colours I'd usually choose to do this with, so we'll have to see how it turns out. Uh, because this is so basically, I'm going to start off with a nice mix of cadmium and alizarin, just greying it out slightly, or darkening it down slightly with a bit of uh, uh, Windsor Blue. And then we're going to have to kind of jump in there quick with some bluey greys to see what happens, basically. So there you go. It's quite warm, isn't it? But not really dark enough. Let's try some alizarin on its own. Bear in mind, these are going to be the shadows. Now I need to mix the blue in with a little bit of alizarin, or perhaps not any alizarin, on the page. So basically what we're trying to do is make these shadows interesting. A bit of warmth in there. I want to go over the edge there. Let's just take that out. And as we come down to the keel, we've got darker colour underneath the boat. So I'm going to put that in with that. Coming back with some alizarin. To deepen it slightly. Oh, it's a it's a bit of a jumping act, but it's fun because you're not having to, you can kind of relax a bit with it because you've only got three colours to work with. And we've got there's that underneath the boat. It's all kind of part of it. I'll just leave that like that for a minute. Then at the top. Get a smaller brush. There's a nice now this has got to be the same three colours, so I've got to make some really dark up to suggest that rail. Coming 
nice browny reddy colour, more yellow, more red. That's it. And I want that to run into the boat. It's those darks that are going to help make the lights. And now it's when we start placing the darks things going on here for the rigging. I just want to get that sort. So we have got quite that that shadow is starting to settle down now. It start the colours are starting to fuse together. There's a bit of a that's, that's starting to fuse together quite nicely. I just want to put a bit more blue. There we go. It's Windsor blue, Elizabeth and Crimson just on its own in the bottom here from where that bit runs that might have been a little bit too much but we'll just let that run for a minute and now I want to do before that actually dries I want to get the, a nice shadow in this way this is you know is it, you see, well, if you have the um, because the, my problem being today is I've not I wouldn't choose these three colours to necessarily paint this scene, so I'm having to really sort of make sure I'm getting the best out of them that I can. So now I'm going to be putting this shadow. Make sure I get this right. It's quite a heavy shadow of the boat being cast. Harder on that edge, and there's a leg that comes through. Get that in quickly. That way, right. So now we need to quickly get that shadow in. This is where you're sort of like when you're painting, it comes exciting because there's there's certain parts of painting where nothing's happening, and you've got all the time in the world, and then all of a sudden, you're you're committed, and you've got to make those decisions. Let's just turn that. It's kind of a funny shape. Okay, for the time being, that's going to have to stay like that. Right, while that's drying, we're going to look at this part of the deck work and get the shadows in there. So I want some Melissa and Crimson. Just grey it out slightly. Go straight with some some warm first. And if I look at it, it So now you've got to be when you're doing this now. It's, it's, it's being mindful of um, making sure you leave your whites because if you don't, you'll obliterate it all in the sort of the panic of doing this, and then you'll have difficulties in making your painting look interesting. 
So I'm just sort of squinting my eye and picking up the best of the, the shadows. I'm, I'm just painting the lights and darks. So I'm not even really thinking about what I'm painting. I'm not thinking, well, that's a boat. I'm just thinking about the actual light and dark I see there. dark it goes across there like that and there's another dark it goes across there so basically this will be quite interesting because at the end we can have a good look and bearing in mind this is just a three color painting I think we've got some quite nice colours going on in the picture, in the painting. Right, I'm just going to get my little brush now. Again, I've got to go back to mixing my darks. I need to mix three colours. Instead of just being able to pick up raw sienna and a bit of ultramarine, I've got to mix three colours to get my darks and get the right dark, the warm dark or the cool dark. A lot of adjusting. And then the picture goes out. Now I get that window in. There's this little window here before that's it. And there's some rails going on there. They should have been a bit warmer. because then if you're not careful you, you warm it up and then you get green so you've got to put the red back in to bring it back to a brown a dark brown so you know that there, there, there are there are things that slow you down painting with three colors but it's good to know that you can just take three colors out into your palette out into your uh, your painting trip and you can do most things you want to do putting in this little rail now, just going to put that in very loosely and it's just about preserving these lights keeping the interest going on the boat and I think we're slowly getting there So it's a combination of just painting in wet and wet. I've got to put the uh, anti when that dries on and come back here and do that on the other side. Should have done that at the same time. Just gonna put my boom in. Now I'm just putting the foot in where the uh, mast sits in. about it. So now we've got to put the mast in. I'll show you how I do that. What I generally do, because it's quite close up, I want to get it reasonably accurate. I tend to tip my tip it my page around whatever way it sort of uh, works for you. Mix it and I can see it's kind of like I want a warm grey for that keep battling with the getting green all the time and then I use my mool stick and I basically this wants to be a quite a quick you see my head in there it's not that kind of just drops that in like that Take some rigging because some of the rigging is dark and some of it's light. We'll scratch some out and we'll also put some in. 
I'm just trying to get it as really to be to be a broken line, not a solid line. Using it so it looks like it sort of fades in and out. Just turn the page around. There, like that. I'm just going to uh, soften, soften it a bit. Again, it wants it to be. Let's change brushes a minute. And what we'll do to make that reasonably convincing, put some shadow in to the bottom and just let that run up that side to go down this way. Again I don't paint those in very heavily. Just enough to let people know they're there. There's some going off over the back. Yeah, we'll do a bit of splattering. Just having a look at just a little bit of splattering to just to indicate all the little stones the foreground. That's why I splatter all the paintings everywhere. But just paint loosely and have a go. Okay then thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing your paintings in the forum. Bye for now.